Uh, now I am in a retreat in uh, Romania. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's a breatharian retreat or <laughs> like that? It's, uh, you know, I am most of the time living a pranic lifestyle. I mm-hmm. call it pranic because breatharian has too much uh, charge on it. You know, people expect you to never drink or eat anything. And it's not the truth of what we are. Uh, it's a, a pranic retreat because uh, mostly I'm on prana and because we are in the middle of the nature here. Oh, wow. Uh, for all, all our listeners here. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not hearing you. Ah, you're not hearing me? Okay. Maybe you've muted yourself. No. Uh, Do you hear me? I'm not hearing you. Still not hearing me? Okay. Mm. Oh, Are you hearing me now? Do you hear me now? I'm with you guys. Whenever the sound comes back in, I'm ready yeah. to roll. Okay, do you hear me now? Hello. Hello. Hmm. Oh, just a second. Sorry. Yeah, something happened to this computer. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm back in. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a bit worried there. Okay. Um, for uh, for all our listeners, um, when you say like living on prana, mm-hmm. what is that? Uh, it's the ability to be nourished in a different way. And uh, for me, it has been uh, a journey for 10 years now. For the first time, I've noticed that I can be nourished without necessarily eating. Uh, I've noticed that uh, when I was an adolescent, when I was around 14, I had this time when um, the situation in my home was a little bit tense and I started to decrease my food intake. Uh, not, not because I was a troubled child or, or anything. It was just my natural way of adapting to, to raise the frequency of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the home and of my, my life. And I was okay with that. I was okay with eating just half an apple a day and going to school and doing sports and stuff. And it lasted for a while and I was still energetic and still studying and still having good grades. And then uh, I went back to my normal uh, way of uh, eating. Um, but I've, and, and back then I haven't really paid attention to what happened because I was just a kid and not really interested in you know, my diet. I was just doing what I felt. But later on in 2009, when I learned that it, there are people in the world who are able to survive without food, without eating daily, it felt completely natural to me. And uh, I met uh, one of them in 2009, her name is Jasmine, and I didn't have any doubt at that time that this is possible. You know, many people are skeptical, many people are trained to, to, to think that if you don't eat, you'll die. And it's true uh, for much, for, for most of, of humanity, if they don't have a uh, energy practice and they don't have their channels open it's true that if you stop eating you'll die so it's a warning before anything else that this conversation refers to people and situations where training has been in place and where the, the nadis or the energy channels are open to this type of nourishment that is called prana so to, to, to answer your question, there's this field of energy, there's this field of potential that has been also proven by science now. They call it ether. We call it, you know, in the holistic world, it's been called prana, chi, mana, life force, if you will. Uh, and science have proven that everything is held within this field. Everything is connected by this field. Everything is tied together by this field and it is in all your atoms and in all our our, um, material uh, shape, yes? And this is what is nourishing 
our bodies also. And uh, it can be nourishing in a denser form through food. So when you eat food, you're basically extracting prana from it to nourish your system. But also you can extract it directly from the field. That would be pranic nourishment in a nutshell. Mm. Wow. So if people hear this and they feel like a calling, oh, this might be the road for me. What would, would be uh, the best way to to start learning about this or uh, what step should one take? <laughs> well, in, in, in truth, at this moment of planetary evolution, this is the road for everyone because and to some degree, to some extent, it means that our channels or energy field is opening more and more to this type of nourishment, to this type of source feeding. That doesn't mean that automatically the whole humanity is going to stop eating. <laughs> it's uh, utopical at this moment because not all the fields, the energy is ready for it. Uh, there has been times here on Earth, though, when the population, uh, the ancient civilizations were nourished in this way. And if we talk Lemuria and even some stages of Atlantis, I think, especially the ones who are the you do, trained in this they would have that ability so it's not new on the planet it has it has been before and in other civilizations it's a common thing um here on earth now we're preparing for it uh this current situation is one of the stages of this preparation so um it's not so bad that it's happening even though some people are passing and that's an unhappy an event for their families but it's a stage of human evolution and the the reason our body is reacting this way is because it's preparing for the next um the next level uh we can notice that in the fact that much more people are going to a lighter food so if you would watch the movie vegan who was made in 2016 2017 and maybe it has um you know, uh, newer versions, you can see how the numbers of people that are going to vegetarianism and veganism, therefore not using animal products and heavy food anymore, is increasing by the minute. So corporations are adapting to it, um, you, you know, restaurants and everything is adapting to it because humanity is changing its way of feeding itself literally and it's not just a trend it's not just the stars or some holistic people or people working you know meditating in a cave it's everyone from 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 the shopkeepers to the medical personnel to everyone who's feeling this call that heavy food is no longer our fuel mm -hmm. so it's happening so this would be the sir the first stage you know to answer your question this would be the first stage lighten up your diet check with your body Body, see if your food is habit or is something you need. And if it's habit, maybe change your habit into something lighter. Don't stop eating, of course, because you will you will have troubles, you know, with, with your functioning. But start learning about what your body really needs. You know, grow or develop the habit of um, putting healthy, energetic food in your body instead of junk. Uh, uh, drop the animal products, drop everything that is not uh, of high energy, and you can study this on the internet and see what high energy means and what what really is nourishing and what isn't. And from that, you, you will no notice some changes in your way of functioning, in your way of thinking, in your general mood. You would have less uh, depre depression or, or bad moods, and that's the first step. Second step would be, of course, detox your bodies, that's the only way that I know of that we can grow into a lighter frequency. Otherwise, the parasites inside and other um, bacteria and stuff will keep making you crave for the junk stuff. Mm -hmm. And you'll get back to it and you won't know why because you'll go like, I'm feeling so good with this new food and yet I still want that, that big burger or whatever. That's because your body is still not at that level of frequency. Just purify it, detoxify it, and um, you'll get to there. You'll get to a, a balance where you, you won't need or even tolerate 
uh, the food that is bad for you. So that would be the second stage. And the third stage that is, and, and they all go in parallel, uh, is uh, start developing an energy practice. You know, it doesn't have to be too woo-woo if you don't believe energy exists, but maybe take two moments a day, morning and evening, to just follow your breath and reassess your thoughts and your emotions. And from there, you can develop maybe meditation, you can develop some uh, movement techniques like Qigong or yoga or dancing. You can do small steps like this and you'll, you'll notice changes. It's been a long re response, but <laughs> I, I, you know, to this, you cannot just give it in a nutshell, I feel. Mm, yeah, thank you for that answer. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, it's like, Mm, these things are in a way uh, so many like aspects and are it's like mm, uh, a multidimensional view on things so i think it's very good to have these layers so you can really follow and and depending on where the the viewers are because there's also also different levels where mm, on consciousness where you are and and to find that exactly match mm. is a good answer yeah so, so and you have been um in practice for this for around 10 years 10 years yeah when i was a kid i was already meditating mm -hmm. and uh, with crystals and i moved to vegetarianism around 17 just because i realized that dead animals is not my food mm. um and that was my practice in my early childhood and adolescence then I stopped for 10 years to, from around 19 to around 27, 28. Uh -huh. I stopped completely all the holistic awareness of all kind. <laughs> I did my human homework, yeah. you know, with management and uh, building a home and marriage and chasing for top notch um, company um, assessments, this stuff. Uh, and then around 27, 28, I got back into this practice and stayed. Mm, wow. Uh, that, um, mm, that period of, um, of stopping doing this holistic thing, is that in a way of um, experience of uh, grounding yourself? Yeah, I was not ungrounded. I was actually much better in my childhood and adolescence with my perception that we are energy and everything is energy. And with my interest that I also have now in meditation in numerology and connective connectedness, you know, I was not ungrounded at all. I was on my path. Mm. And but it was necessary for me because I always feel like a researcher studying humanity. <laughs> I don't know what that, why that is, but it's, it is so. Mm. Uh, it was necessary for me to have a stage of complete oblivion <laughs> yeah. where I just do the human stuff, you know, and coming back from work after 16 hours and watching TV and falling asleep and not learning about anything new. It was a stage that now helps me understand We lost a little bit of connection here, but I hope uh, it will come back. Uh, if you hear me, uh, Christiana. It's okay. Let me show. I mean, we can work together a little bit. Let's see what we can do. You know, maybe 10 minutes in the morning, you know, meditate and breathe and see what happens. Stuff like this. If I, had, I didn't have that experience, who knows? Maybe, maybe I wouldn't have been able to relate to humanity in the same way I do now. Mm. I can imagine you, you you have a lot of clients uh, within different kind of practices and mm. and also living that kind of life to also being able to relate um to uh, I think I think that could be like really valuable. <laughs> or yeah it's it's still a learning process i haven't done it all i haven't done the drugs i didn't have i didn't do the heavy sex stuff i didn't do the the i i didn't go really really into the depth of the human um 
I don't find a name for this now. You know, the human play. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. And I don't feel it's necessary because some things I can assess just energetically and maybe I've done it before and other times. Uh, but I do have a certain degree of understanding of how that feels, you know, and it helps me relate in, in a better way with people that are in that stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so where you are at right now, um, uh, individually, um, if you would convert everything you are individually to a collective and a global scale, what would your dream world look like now? Ah, I love this question. It's exactly what we're working on. And it's the perfect day to ask it. Mm. <laughs> because, you know, today it's 5-5. Five, five, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a big portal opening. The crystalline hearts are aligning today. And the, what I mean by the crystalline hearts is the central sun heart is aligning to the earth uh, heart through our heart <laughs> so it's a big alignment so it's a big time to dream of a new world and actually i am doing this i'm aligning all that i am to the collective reality <laughs> it's exactly what's happening uh, my dream world is a world where we are aware of our connectivity where we're all operating from a field of love and from a field of um, mutual beneficial uh, end results where we're communicating freely and transparently, uh, maybe all of us telepathically because that's possible more and more. Uh, it's a world where we use our resources wisely and with the purpose of growing our planet, not depleting it. It's a world of free energy where we are aware of universal abundance, abundance and know how to tap into it where we're using technology to a certain degree, but are aware that we're not depending on it, <laughs> where we have vehicles and devices that are not operating um, by depleting and um, disharmonizing the planetary rhythm, but actually enhancing it. Uh, a world where relationships are stable, grounded, and based on love, and uh, sexuality is a way of sharing love, not of trading of any kind, you know, or on an emotional or financial level, <laughs> where we know that our bodies are the temples of the divine and we treat it, as, treat it and share it as so, where we bring new souls as children in a very conscious and a uh, deeply thought way, <laughs> not randomly, like, oops, it happened. Uh, and uh, where we uh, are aware that our nourishment comes from source. And if we still choose to taste, it's just for pleasure. That would be my ideal word. It oh, seems wow. utopic, right? Yeah, I love <laughs> that. Thank you. <laughs> it's a great vision and a great um, new template. It's, it's, it's coming, actually, uh, utopic as it seems, it's coming, it has been here before, it's being recreated, it's just a matter of mutual decision to bring it into being. And my question for the listeners is, are you ready for it? Do you wish to see that coming? <laughs> maybe, maybe the people can type yes in the comments if they do. Yeah. It would be interesting to interact now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please do. <clears throat> Everybody is listening who feels this calling for this new uh, vision template living in this world. Type yes. And yes. We... And yes, it's actually a code for bringing it into being. Yeah. It's very easy now when you say yes to something, it, you know, it, you're just assessing to the universal field, to the universal mind or whatever you want to call it that. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. It's like a magic word. Yeah. Mm. And also, mm, um, you speaking about this vision is also um, bringing energy to this vision and bringing it to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you, as a listener here... Yeah, the power uh, of word and learning, absolutely. Yeah, so let's um, 
encourage everybody to to speak about their visions and bring their inner worlds through mm. our voice mm. uh, and give birth to it here. yeah and maybe yeah. in the comments people can share their vision of what the what this world would be and how it would play out you know this this new or not necessarily new but a new stage of how planetary evolution how, what they see for mm. the perfect or harmonious uh, coexistence here yeah yeah I love nice to see i love that so mm -hmm. please write in the comments um um all about your visions and what you see and there's also a thing to 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 find new ways to dream even bigger yeah sometimes i'm i'm uh i'm thinking mm, what would uh if you're thinking about some ascended masters ah yeah. oh, what would that master do in this situation yeah. and that's really interesting and sometimes um when we when we speak about uh, collectives from you know maybe limerian collectives from the eighth dimension for example uh -huh. then i can go ah oh, what would they do uh -huh. <laughs> and, yeah. and and also you, you, because you can also always like convert it convert it back to me to my yeah. Yeah. and it's it's very good to ask that questions because they are you <laughs> yeah so, yeah uh, I, I had a super beautiful talk last night with a colleague of and friend of mine, Adam Apollo, uh, from the Resonance Academy and Unify. And we've talked about intergalactic civilizations. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, quite far out because we've described, he's, he's, he's been describing all the civilizations that he knew and been in contact with. Mm -hmm. And we've also talked about the Lemurian and Atlantean civilizations that has been here on Earth. And actually, many of us are them, are the reincarnated version of the members of that civilization. So asking yourself, what would an, a master do? Or what would a Lemurian do? Is actually asking your inner master, what would you do? And you'd be amazed what answers can come up and or what what would love do is another uh, question to ask <laughs> yeah. i love that uh, that's also um we can do like a, an invitation for that <laughs> <laughs> every day find find one situation to to ask yourself what would love do and that brings me into um my next question for you um Again, where you are at right now, uh, do you have like any challenges, challenge, ch challenges in your life right now? Uh, what are they, and how do you deal with them? Mm. You know, my challenge is um, very interesting, and I'm sharing this in all vulnerability at the moment. Uh, my challenge is uh, to have you know, normal activities in my life. <laughs> mm. And you know, the 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 day-to-day -day human stuff, like playing and having fun with friends and, uh, uh, you know, going out for an ice cream, doing nothing, or going at movies and going at parties. It's something and, and, and stuff like this. The, the, the usual day-to-day -day life of human relating, uh, what is done here on the planet, I don't do that very often, not because I reject it or consider it futile or anything, is just because I'm in this rhythm of super high creativity and connectedness all the time where, you know, I just ended an interview last night at 11 p.m. and now it's 10 a.m. and I'm again doing something and it's not overworking. I feel super jazzed up and super interested in really doing this, <laughs> you know? I feel okay and I feel amazingly um, empowered by by what I'm doing right now, and I love it. 
And, and later on at 8 p.m., we're going to have another meditation. And at 9 11, another meditation. And, and globally, and working with portals, and that's what I do all the time. I don't do very often the things that I told you before. I have, I have done it uh, during the 10 years that I mentioned. Now it's not so often that is present in my life. My challenge is to stay connected to this that type of life also and enjoy it. Sometimes I get bored in it. Mm. Yeah. So um, if you go a bit deeper in that in that kind of challenge, mm. um, if we consider it like a bubble or like a container, mm. um, is it, are you going into your is that going into your human experience even more or what is it in that um, i'm a bit curious because there's like you know what it is in there is it kind of like a longing or is it something what is it yeah it's actually i would like to play more mm. to verbalize it in just a few words i would like to play more i don't find or give myself enough time for playing and i'm now practicing like literally practicing with including more playfulness into my life uh, back again because i've been constantly working for like eight years mm. in um you know practice with myself daily meditations for many hours various other practices practice with other people you know one-on-one -on -one sessions workshops conferences interviews all this stuff I'm now including the play practice in my life, <laughs> like literally going out and playing badminton or doing a workshop with kids where we finger paint or, um, you know, painting by myself and knitting and uh, dancing around the house. I'm including these consciously in my life to reweave this frequency of playfulness because in, on the inside, we're also having the inner child and the, the kid that wants to have fun. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm nurturing that so that it doesn't get, uh, you know, forgotten. Mm. <laughs> and I think uh, universe is hearing your words now. Yeah, <laughs> bring, it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, bring it on. Yeah. Bring it on. We need that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if we use this as an example, because I think everybody has like a longing or something they want to do or like a challenge. And now you're in a very positive way. You're expressing your longing. And then uh, I, I think my, my experience is uh, universe is then bringing situations that maybe are new to you that you need to say yes to. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, I'm so, already saying yes. <laughs> so um, I have two questions around that because this is how you, you make true change in your life. So when you, how, how can you like recognize, okay, here comes a new situation. Mm, that's number one. And w when I do this, uh, I often have a little resistance to this mm -hmm. like new situation because it's, it's not part of my, um, Daily uh, rhythm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I need to have like, have like awareness or like a motivation to, to take a step over this uh, little resistance to actually make this new change. So how can you do that? Well, tune into your heart. I, for me, that's what works. You know, I notice sometimes my resistance or going into the old patterns, like somebody calls and says, you know, let's go outside and have fun or, or let's, let's do this. And let's, uh, and I, I go into the pattern of, yeah, but I have to organize this, uh, you know, global meditation, or I have to to share that thing, or I have to, you know, there's this book that I haven't finished, whatever it is. And I notice myself right in that moment making the habitual choices. And I go like, what does it feel to go back into my natural rhythm? And what and is my body relaxing or contracting? And what does it feel to go into this new invitation? Is my body relaxing or contracting? Is my heart opening? And if my heart is opening, I just go for it. I don't even, even think about it. <laughs> and, and sometimes it, even it's extreme. I mean, extreme. 
things that wouldn't feel safe for most people, like your last 400 euros, you take them and you go to another country to do something that feels that calls your heart in that moment, you know, to meet some friends or to do some, you know, gathering or whatever. And you don't think, well, this is my rent, what I'm going to do tomorrow, what if, or, or you're feel to join a, a workshop or you're feel to join a play. If your heart opens, just do it. The universe takes care of the rest of the stuff. And that's what I learned. I've been living on the edge since 10 years ago, you know, dropping everything, my company, my apartment, whatever I felt it was necessary to drop and moved along and so on. Uh, your heart knows and the universe support it, supports it. That's my answer. Mm, wow. So uh, it's all about having trust. Yeah, a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, I would love to hear a little bit. It, you talk about Lemuria and Atlantis and, and people who will be get a like calling or like get curious about that what what um, if we start like with lemuria what is that to you what is lemuria to me you mean yeah yeah or your experience or your like knowledge or um, yes i got it mm. um uh yes it's like uh first of all i love to see you and i feel we've we've been connected before in that civilization mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's that what comes first. Yeah. <laughs> and it's beautiful to meet again this is the first time we meet but you really i'm honored mm. and <laughs> yeah that's what comes first you know above and beyond everything and it's uh, a frequency first of all lemuria is a frequency is a frequency that has built been built and brought on the planet uh, by a mixture of civilizations that were very advanced that are um, have embodied here to cultivate their awareness here on earth uh, back in the days and uh, it's it's a frequency that has been developed on a certain continent or, or, or a certain area of the planet uh, for a while then it got because of the nature of the density here or the general frequency of this layer some of it got a bit disharmonized that frequency of lemuria got a bit disharmonized there was some power gains beginning into some levels of it so therefore it had to at some point disengage from the surface physical appearance that they had and go into more subtle layers that they're in now hmm. so many of that civilization are still living but are living in the inner earth cities uh that are telos and agartha maybe you've heard of it if you haven't just read the books Telos and Inner Earth. One is by Aurelia Louise Jones and the other one is by Radu Chinamar, take notes. Um, so they're still living there and thriving in their advanced systems. Some of them got into subtle cities or realms like Shambhala or uh, what's the other one? Um, anyway, it will come. And, and, and having a more etherical way of presenting themselves some of them moved into the atlantean frequency so evolving still here on earth but decreasing or lowering their frequency to a degree that at some point they got into power gains or they got into things that have eventually exploded their civilizations mm -hmm. so uh as far as i remember of course, there's different layers of awareness into that, and I may not know or remember all of them. If you have other viewpoints, feel free to comment on them, even you know, either you, Marcus, or the ones who are watching. But that's what I feel about it. Mm. And it's and and the thing is that it's coming back also. That level of frequency is coming back now. Most of us are again taking bodies here on Earth 
the, the, the new children are amazing beings, either from that civilization or from higher advanced civilizations that are not living on earth. Uh, it's coming back strong and it's dictating us or, or mm, helping us to move into a lighter frequency also with our diet and part of it is planning nourishment. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you for that answer. It truly resonates. Mm. Mm -hmm. I would like to mm, make an add on question on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you view time? Mm -hmm. We can talk about linear time. We can talk about uh, like a zero point um, where all times exist at the same time. And, and what, what uh, do you understand? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, time is a concept uh, that is functioning mainly, you know, it's functioning up to a certain level of vibration. Uh, the way we see, the way people see it now, it's only functioning up to a certain level of vibration. Uh, what people have been used to call 3D, only then and there time is operating the way humans are perceiving it with past, present, future, before and after, stuff like that. After a certain level of vibration, the higher you move, the more fluidity you have with that uh, concept and that perception to the degree where we are now, most of us, where time is no longer at all uh, flowing in a line. You're no longer perceiving maybe some events of your life as being in the past or in the future. You're no longer able to pinpoint when was this? Was this yesterday? Was this 10 years ago? You feel like everything is somehow mishmashed into this wholeness where certain moments of what you felt like past are feeling like very present now and certain moments of what you might feel like future are also being perceived like as if you're living them now and some people call that premonition it's not premonition is accessing another point in your existence in your timeline that is still happening now and with that, I'm developing to what people call past lifetimes or past existences and future existences. What I'm working with is a therapy called soul healing, where we go to the center, which is the soul. We go within the soul. And from there, we can perceive all lifetimes as developing around that central point, not before and after. And you can access any of them as being now and you can access your multidimensional nature, which is experiencing all of them now. <laughs> so it's a now nowness where you're having awareness and access to the experiences and abilities that your soul has chosen to uh, manifest or embody or, or experience through all the roles and costumes that you've taken on. Mm. And you can experience them all now. <laughs> wow. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. And this is my perception of time. So now I am here as your speaker or presenter in this interview. And now I'm in the, in the inner earth civilizations, or now I'm in, in a higher earth council. And now I'm leading a ship. And now I'm in, in a, a being that doesn't have a body, it's just a pulsation of light. All of this is happening now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I resonate 100% with that. Mm, and I'm leveling that as well. Um, so, um, with that thought about time uh, for oneself, uh, um, as you mentioned, we uh, you felt this connection uh, between you and me th uh, from Lemuria, for example. Mm. Um, then you can also like apply that to this connection. As we speak now, we also have like a connection in different timelines. Exactly. And, yeah. So uh, when we now talk about uh, new visions for this world, 
Mm, one aspect of that could it be that <clears throat> our like Lemurian aspects are like um, in a way mm, contributing or like uh, collaboration co uh, is in a collaboration with our incarnations now, where we through this timeless um, structure, yeah, structure uh, can like anchor in and take inspiration and um, through the filter of this incarnation and this world and our timelines now can like bring those energies in into this. Yeah, that's what we're doing. It's yeah. uh, it's as we speak, we're still also part of a gathering where we're working on the planet, like it's in the middle of us and it's spinning and we're working on it. And mm -hmm. as we speak, we're discussing here new possibilities for the planet. And as we speak, we're wondering, is this our higher frequency embodying in this body, the things that we're doing there? Yes, we are. We are ascending to the scent all the time, ascending to the scent. And <laughs> with uh, the pranic festivals that I'm organizing, uh, around the world. Uh, one of the things that we do after is with some of the speakers and some of the main participants of the gathering, we're going to these amazing energy vortexes that are temples or uh, places in nature and so on, where we work with them. And uh, this uh, in March in India, we were at this amazing temple working with some of the breatharians and some of the participants of the Pranic Festival in India. And we came up with this word that is embodilightment. Embodilightment means we're embodying our light into this suit that is nice for most of us, uh, where all the knowledge and the power and the virtues and the abilities that we have in other mm, realms of existence can be manifested like here now through this body and at we can act, the more we open up the more we feel connected the more we access all of that the key though is that we have a pure body mm. and pure pure layers of energy so the more you pure you purify you detox your layers the more you can embody light yourself <laughs> into this physicality because then your structure your physical your cells and your emotional and mental bodies can take in and encompass and ground and contain that um, light that layer of you that is more advanced in other dimensions and this is why since i came back home actually since 2013 but now for a month we've been doing weekly pranic processes of eight days of detox on all levels physical, emotional, mental, uh, spiritual, just to cleanse and re-wave these patterns of our physical embodiment so that we can embody light more. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. if, if our listeners here want to learn more about what you're talking about now, like detoxing um, all of our bodies, aspects of mm -hmm. our bodies, um, do you have like a program for that or um, wh where can people find information? Absolutely. Uh, so my website is soulhealingacademy.com. Hmm. This is where I have a gazillion of articles which you can learn from about planning nourishment, about energy, energy work and all this stuff. And uh, on that website at the... At the events section, if you go on soulhealingacademy.com slash events, you, you see all the events that are coming up uh, soon. One of them starts tomorrow. It's a short class on prana, intimacy, and uh, kundalini. That is a four-hour class online. And on Thursday, on May 7th, we start the eight days pranic process, which is online. We meet every day at 8 p.m. or around 8 p.m. We meditate, we discuss new ways of increasing the frequencies and detox systems. And people go, can go through a detox or they, you know, by lightening up their diet, by going on juices, by fasting, if they choose so. But even just to be with us and discuss with us every day is a strong and powerful realignment. 
So on Thursday is the thing that I recommend. And I'm placing it in the comments, if that's OK, so that people yeah. can have faster access to it. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, we are about to end this um, video po podcast. Um, I have two questions. Uh, in a short uh, answer, what are the three most significant things you wish you knew 15 years ago? Uh, first, I wish I knew um, the energy practices that I know now to calm and balance myself. The, that one main thing that I wish I knew even since I was a child and that I'm not teaching to others is the Taoist practices of uh, inner alchemy, uh, alchemizing our emotions, you know, knowing that each organ stores a specific emotions, knowing how to work with our inner organs to release and transform these emotions. That's the crucial, I believe, system of operating for human health and human balance. And I wish I knew it when I was an adolescent uh, or even earlier. Um, I wish I knew how much our diet impacts our way of functioning, uh, how much it burdens our emotional and mental system. So it's not only about your physical health, but actually your whole emotional uh, response to life and your whole way of thinking depends to a high degree on what you put in your body because everything is information and everything transforms um, everything, every food transforms into thoughts and emotions at the, at the, the energy level. So I wish I knew that because intuitively I was sensing not to eat meat. I was sensing not to eat certain things. I would throw the meat out the window when I was a child, but I wouldn't know why. And of course I could go back and forth into either doing it or not doing it. But if somebody had told me at an early childhood age, this is causing you to have rage outbursts or desperation or fear or uneasiness and unsafety on this planet because you're taking on the feelings of the animals that have been killed i would have stopped right away hmm. this is this is a really important thing for the balance of humanity i wish i wish i knew it sooner yeah wow okay do you have some final words for our listeners to end mm -hmm. this podcast uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I feel <sighs> what the thing that comes and that I'm studying a lot lately is human relationships. Uh, and I feel it's really, really important like now because everybody is relating very closely to the ones around them because of the fact that they have to stay in their homes with the loved ones, with the family, with all that. And human relationships has been really, really something that I'm diving much, much deeper now into. It's helping the planet, I feel, uh, to be more aware of this. And just to learn more about your relationships, the way you respond emotionally in the way that you do, the way that you share energies with other, others, your sexuality, why is it playing out the way it is? How can you do things in a more evolved and harmonious way at that level as well that's what we're talking about tomorrow in in the prana intimacy and kundalini uh, class what is your patterns and what triggers them it's very important that we look at this because now that's generating your your general state and the general state of the ones around you, you're impacting them by the way you're reacting. And it's really important now to know intimacy at a deeper level and to display it in a harmonious way. And I'm not just meaning physical intimacy. I'm meaning that intimacy means into me see and letting yourself be seen in the wholeness that you are. So I'm inviting people to dive deeper into that for a more harmonious state of relating with the dear ones, with the ones around them, but also with the planet as a whole. And that leads us to the knowledge that 
we are united and we are one. <laughs> yes, and yeah, that's the final thing that I would say. We are one, but we're inviting you to perceive it fully. Mm. Wow. Thank you for those uh, last words. Beautiful uh, put um, as a capture or end for this uh, podcast. Thank you so much uh, for uh, joining uh, this podcast, uh, Christiana. And uh, uh, everybody listening, uh, look in the comments and you find all the information about Christiana and all the work that you do and uh, maybe find some courses or like um, workshops or information that resonates with you. So thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing this time, Christiana. Um, thank you so much, Marcus, for your invitation and for your presence. It's been, it has been great sharing with you. And for the viewers, if you want a, a nice dinner, uh, you know, tonight there's a free, <laughs> free crystalline heart activation meditation that we're doing on my Facebook page, Christiana Eltran, that you can participate in or join in spirit if you're not online. And Marcus, you are invited, of course, because you are already part of this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Mm, Blessings thanks. to all. <laughs> mm, thank you. Okay, bye, everybody.